everyone and welcome to Fandom Vintage. My name is Lily and I make things inspired by some of my favorite fandoms but with a vintage twist. So today I'm going to show you how I made an outfit inspired by Animal Crossing's favorite resident services assistant, Isabel. Now this particular outfit is based on her winter outfit in New Leaf because I do love a good comfy cardigan and I honestly couldn't resist. Now Isabel's outfit is so cute already as it is, but I did want to judge it up just a little bit by making it a little bit of a 1930s inspired look. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So the first thing I always start off with is a bit of a concept sketch and there is my chart of body measurements and then I come up with a quick diagram of the pieces I will need to be cutting out and the measurements. So first, the cardigan. So fabrics I used were this super soft Hachi sweater knit in mustard yellow and this chocolate brown ribbed knit that has a bit of stretch to it. Now to draft the pattern. So using the measurements I had and the diagram I drew, I drafted it onto some patterning paper and cut it out. Using the pattern for the back as a template, I also traced it out for the front of the sweater and adjusted for the curved collar. And here are the pieces for my sweater, the front, the back, and I also use my measurements for the sleeve. Next, I just lay the pattern pieces down with some pattern weights and cut out my fabric. For the sleeve piece, I decided to try out my rotary cutter, which worked out pretty well. The only place I didn't use it on was for the front portion of the sleeve where I cut out a little notch just to remember which side was the front. Now to assemble the sweater, I first sewed together the shoulder portions of the front and back pieces. I decided to use my serger for this project just because the knit is so stretchy and to avoid some fraying with the knit fabric. So I know this isn't technically the correct way to put in a sleeve, but the way I like to do it is to put in the sleeve before I sew the sides of the shirt down. And this is just to avoid any bunching and excess fabric and I just make sure everything kind of fits before sewing all the sides together. So this is what it looks like with the sleeves sewn on and as you can see once we lay it down flat we have the shape of our sweater and we can just go ahead and pin and sew down the sides and the sides of the sleeves. Now this is what it looks like with the sides sewn down. Now for the cuffs of the sweater I went ahead and measured out and cut out strips from the brown ribbed knit fabric. And since the rib knit does come in a loop, I went ahead and cut them down one side so we would have one long strip to work with. Now to attach the cuff to the sweater, I'll just be folding this in half here and sewing the raw edge of this to the sweater. Now as you can see here, I did trim the sweater a little bit just to give it more of that cropped sweater look. And again, using the serger to sew all of our edges together. Now for the sleeve cuffs, I actually made these little tubes out of the ribbing first. That way we could flip it halfway inside out. And so we have this little ring that we can attach onto the sleeve and then serge it into place. Also, serging with a teeny tiny sleeve is not the funnest thing to do. Next, I pinned and top stitched down the ribbing to the front and collar portion of the sweater and added some buttonholes. And lastly, attached some cute little white buttons to the front of the sweater. Now onto the collared shirt. I really wanted a cozy shirt, so I used some leftover white flannel fabric. So using the same methods as I did for the sweater, I cut out a mock-up out of my patterning paper and traced it onto my fabric. And as you can see here, I somehow lost my tailor's chalk, so I just made do with the pencil. So here I'm drafting out the Peter Pan collar and the collar stand for the shirt. However, I ended up not using the collar stand at all since I wanted the Peter Pan collar to lie flat onto the shirt. And then cutting it out of fabric. 
Now before sewing anything together, I did just put it onto my dress form to make sure everything laid down nicely. I did want to have a dart put into the shirt just for a little bit better fit. So here I am just measuring it out and pinning down where I want the dart to be and sewing it together. For the placket on the shirt, I just finger pressed a small edge onto the front of the shirt and cuffed it up and then we end up pinning everything down and top stitching down the length of the shirt. At this point I sewed the shoulders of the front and back pieces together and I also sewed along the curved edge of the collar. Before flipping the collar I had to make sure to clip the curves along the collar piece just to make sure there won't be too much bunching and extra fabric once we flip it right side out. From here I go ahead and flip the collar piece right side out and give it a good press. Now to attach the collar onto the shirt I pinned one side of the collar to the outside of the shirt right sides together. I don't pin down the back side yet because later I will be cuffing it and then sewing it down afterwards. Little PSA, always press out all of your seams. Now onto the inside of the collar. So here is where I start cuffing it over and pinning it down to the inside of the shirt. And to be sewing it also along the front side where I had already made a seam earlier as close as I can to the seam and that way it will catch onto the back side of the collar. Now as you can see you can barely see the top stitching since I did it so closely to the seam but it did catch all of my fabric on the back side to tack down my collar. Now I decided to make this top sleeveless since I didn't want to have to pull my sleeves underneath the sweater sleeves. So here I just did a rolled hem on my sleeve openings. So a little closer look on how I do buttonholes. I have this button foot where you can fit your desired button. Mark out where the buttonholes are going. Use the buttonhole setting on the sewing machine and it will make the perfect size buttonhole for your button. Now at this point the shirt is pretty much done but it was still a little bit loose and I wanted it to fit a little bit more closely so I went back in and did darts along the front and the back. And the shirt is all done. And now on to the skirt. I'll be using this satin backed moleskin fabric that I have been hoarding for years just waiting for the right project. So for the pencil skirt, I decided to not go with just a plain pencil skirt like Isabel has, but I wanted to do one with two box pleats in the front. So I made a design that was pretty much three different panels that were connected at the bottom. So as you can see here, when we fold the bottom to where the panels meet, you get this nice little box pleat at the very bottom. And for the back of the skirt, I did two panels so that there would be a seam down the middle but with an extra wide gap in the middle to where we can have a double box pleat. And as you can see, just fold twice on either side and there is your beautiful double box pleat. And as you can see here, I also accounted for the button plackets and darts. Now of course I'm adding some pockets to my skirt because it is 2020 and honestly everything should have pockets. So here I've got the pieces for my pocket. I have both the front and the back piece and I made sure to trace it with the panel on my skirt just to make sure everything would fit nicely. And by some miracle I have found my tailor's chalk so on to cutting out our fabric. At this point I just clip the box pleats in place just so they stay put while I sew up the panels of the skirt. Now we just pin and sew. For the pocket I cut out two of each of the pattern pieces. Make sure they're all paired up correctly. 
Line up the front of the pocket to the skirt and trim off the excess to match the shape of the pocket. Then I clip and sew the curved edge which will be the opening to the pocket. Now I did understitch my pocket just to make sure that it will lie flat on the garment and it won't pucker outside of the pocket later on. Time to attach the back of the pocket. Here I am just pinning down and sewing along the entire edge of the pocket just to close it off. Lo and behold, a pocket! For the back of the skirt, I'm going to start by top stitching down the placket for the buttons. Here you can see the placket that has been top stitched and pressed and looking nice and neat. And then after top stitching that, I just go ahead and sew the entire back seam all the way down to where the box pleats are. For the box pleats, I did have to switch to metal pins just so that they would stay put while I had it under the foot in the sewing machine. And I just sewed them on either side to make sure they were nice and secure. Time to attach the front to the back. And to do that, I just have to make one long seam, one along the right side and one down on the left. For the waistband, I just cut out a large strip of fabric. I didn't actually measure the length of the fabric because I will be adjusting that to the skirt later on. However, I did make sure to measure twice the width of the waistband because I will be folding it in half and top stitching it down. I'll be attaching the waistband the same way I attached the collar to my shirt, and that would be by pinning the right sides together of the waistband to the outside of the skirt and sewing all the way around. And here you can see the outside of the waistband has been attached to the skirt. Now for the inside of the waistband, I just fold it over and pin it in place. And once everything was pinned, I trimmed the length of the waistband making sure to leave some length for the buttons. To sew on the waistband, I sewed again very very closely to the seam just to make sure that it is as invisible as possible. Here you can see how it looks in the front and how it has caught all of the waistband in the back. And now just a simple rolled hem along the bottom edge of my skirt. Is there such thing as using too many clips? For my buttons, I found these adorable brass and tortoiseshell buttons and I was so excited to use them for this skirt. So I just mark out where my buttonholes will go, use my handy dandy buttonhole foot, open up those buttonholes, mark out the placement for my buttons, and sew those suckers on. And of course, we can't forget the bow tie. Using my super accurate method for figuring out the length, I cut out a long strip of red fabric, surged it all together, flipped it right side out, and gave it a good press, then gave it an invisible stitch just to close up the side. And we're done. So I had some leftover fabric and I figured, why the heck not, let's make some gloves. Okay, okay, so this is definitely not the proper way to make gloves, but this is what usually works out for me in the past with my cosplays as long as I'm using at least a somewhat stretchy fabric. So I just traced around my hand and pinned another piece of fabric underneath, making sure to pin in between the fingers. Then I sew it all the way around, just following the chalk markings that I had made. This one doesn't need any ease or allowance, just because it is on a stretchy fabric already. And then I just do a quick fit test, just to make sure my hand can still get in there. And then pretend that I have webbed fingers, because I am definitely a mature adult. Then I cut off all of that excess fabric and flip it right side out and try it on one more time for another fit test. To make it a little bit more unique, I cut out some notches in the wrist. 
Now finishing off those edges, I'm using just a plain white piping trim and I am pinning this right sides together to the edge of the glove and sewing it all down. Then to give it a nice finish and a bit of polish, I am just going to top stitch right along the trim. There we are. And finally done. I love this outfit so, so much, and I love that I can wear it pretty much anywhere. Now, I did make this hat and this purse to complete my look. So if you want to see how I did those, and there's also free patterns if you wanted to make them yourself, make sure to check out my other videos if you haven't already. Now I do hope that you enjoyed watching me make this project just as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, make sure to like my video and subscribe to my channel for more vintage geeky crafty goodness. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.